Now we're moving into the next next generation of uh, British hymn writers after Watts, after Wesley, after those who even followed Wesley. When we get into the 1800s, what was happening with regard to English singing, especially hymn singing? Well, one of the interesting things that uh, happened in those early to mid-1800s is a movement known as the Oxford Movement. It was uh, a, a movement uh, back toward orthodoxy that said we are losing the heritage that we once had. And so let's not run from the Roman Catholic Church. Rather, let's embrace that heritage and uh, put spiritual life into it. Why run from it? You don't have to. And so there were people like Reginald Heber who wrote, Holy, Holy, Holy. holy, holy. He wrote that for Trinity Sunday. You can see that uh, this is very orthodox in its belief. It's uh, almost Roman Catholic. One of the great blessings that came out of the Oxford movement was a a guy named John Mason Neal, who really believed that uh, there there was so much heritage there in the uh, old Greek hymns and the old Latin hymns. He translated and then metricized, and so uh, from him come hymns like All Glory, Laud, and Honor. And O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and Of the Father's Love Begotten. So we talked about all of these, but uh, really our our focus was on the early Greek or or Latin version. But somebody had to translate that into English, and John Mason Neal did all of those. There were others who were part of that uh, movement, such as Edward Caswell, who did Jesus, the very thought of thee. Jesus, the very thought of thee. With sweetness fills my breast, but sweeter far thy face. And then Catherine Winkworth also did several German chorales from those early days, such as Wake, Awake, for Night is Flying, and O Morning Star, How Fair and Bright, and Now Thank We All Our God, and If You Will Only Let God Guide You, and Jesus Priceless Treasure, and Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Comfort, comfort ye my people. Comfort, comfort ye my people. Speak ye peace, the same. And then Edward Caswell also did When Morning Gilds the Skies. When morning gilds the skies, my heart awaking cries. May Jesus Christ. So we owe it to these of the Oxford movement for having reintroduced us to a lot of the hymns. Also, out of that Oxford movement, there were some uh, original hymns. They weren't just translating old hymns. They were also writing some new ones, and some of these are known to us, such as Matthew Bridges' Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown Him with Many Crowns, the Lamb upon His throne. Or Frederick Faber's Faith of Our Fathers, Living Faith Still. Faith of Our Fathers, Living Still, In spite of dungeon toil and sore. Now, out of this whole movement, there came to be a... Uh, hymn collection called Hymns Ancient and Modern. More recent hymnals published here in America, like the Hymnal for Worship and Celebration, that's had over two million copies sold in the course of uh, 25 years or so. To us, like two or three million is, is a huge number. Over the course of perhaps a hundred years, they sold 150 million copies of hymns ancient and modern. We got to the place in 1820 that hymns were accepted in the Anglican Church, thanks in large part to the Oxford movement. Now, as we get to the end of the 1800s, we find some Victorian hymns and Victorian tunes, that uh, romanticism that was uh, creeping into the church in the 1800s. Uh, By the time we get late 
in the 1800s, we find more, um, I guess, modern hymns in this sense. Henry Alford wrote, Come, ye thankful people, come. Come, ye thankful people, come. Raise the song of harvest home. Henry Light wrote, Abide with me. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. Samuel Stone wrote, The Church is One Foundation. The Church is One Foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. William Whiting wrote, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Eternal Father, Strong to Save, Whose arm hath bound the restless wave. William Howes, For All the Saints. For all the saints who from their labors rest. Edward Plumptree's Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. Rejoice ye pure in heart. Francis Havergal's Take My Life and Let It Be. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Some of the tunes of that era began to take on this Victorian style. Perhaps you can see it in uh, John Dyke's Nicaea. <laughs> Diodemata by George Elvey. You'll notice a a certain liberal turning of the texts in this early 20th century of uh, G.K. Chesterton, the O God of Earth and Altar, or John Oxenham's In Christ There Is No East and West. There is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide More of an interest in social issues. Composers like Ray von Williams and Gustav Holtz, they were looking to sort of recapture this uh, English nationalism folk sound and yet uh, make it sound like church music. Now, in more recent generations, there are some very fine hymn writers in England. Dudley Smith wrote, Tell Out My Soul. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Unnumbered blessings give my spirit voice. Tender to me the promise of his word. In God my Savior shall my heart rejoice. Fred Pratt Green wrote, When in our music God is glorified. When in our music God is glorified, and adoration leaves no room for pride, it is as though the whole creation cried, Alleluia. Brian Wren wrote, God of many names. God of many names gathered into one. In your glory come and meet us, moving, endlessly becoming. God of hovering wings, womb, and birth of time, joyfully we sing your praises, breath of life in every people. Hush, hush, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shout, shout, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing, sing, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing, God is love, God is love. You say you don't particularly know those texts? Well, yeah, probably because you are not a part of one of those churches that sings a lot of hymns. Uh, the party has moved on and uh, has become much more chorus-driven and less hymn-oriented. But this is the heritage that uh, comes from Great Britain, 